I'm going to skip ahead now to six years ago next month. We were by now living in New Hampshire. We thought, as many alcoholics do, that the change of scene, a small, quiet, tiny little village in New Hampshire would be idyllic, peaceful, good for me. Actually, I'm very gregarious, like people, and it turned out to be very bad, as any place would when I was drinking. But what I remember now of those years in New Hampshire is this. When I think of our living in New Hampshire, I don't think of the automobile accidents, the night in jail, the hospitals, 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 the strain and the fear that I lived under, and the strain and uncertainty of my family. What I remember most now about those years of drinking in New Hampshire is this. We had a beautiful house. I remember all day long, day after day after day, looking forward to night, to being alone in my room where I didn't have to see anybody. And then at night, I remember lying awake in my bed and thinking of my New Hampshire neighbors in their little frame houses down in the street and being keenly aware of how they envied me because I used to hear this a good deal. But I knew how much I envied them. And I envied them because they had love in their lives. And I didn't. And I didn't seem to be able to have it. It is true that I was living in the midst of my family who loved me. My wife did. My children did. But at the same time, I had no love because I couldn't love anybody. I couldn't get outside of myself. And I think this is a thing that plagues the alcoholic so much. It seems that all my life long, I have never been able to get outside of myself. I used to discuss this with my wife and wonder how it could be done. It couldn't be. I was too self-absorbed, too self-infatuated, and I drank.